Youth, the courage to be happy, huh? Philosopher, do you need further explanation? Youth, no, hold on. This is getting confusing. First, you tell me that the world is a simple place. That it only seems complicated because of me, and that my subjective view is making it that way. And also, that life just seems complicated because I make it complicated, all of which is what makes it difficult for me to live happily. Then, you say that one should take the stance of teleology, as opposed to Freudian etiology, that one must not search for causes in one's past, and should deny trauma. You say that people act to achieve some goal or other, instead of being creatures who are driven by causes in their past. Right? Philosopher, yes. Youth, furthermore, as the major premise of teleology, you say that people can change. That people are always selecting their own lifestyles. Philosopher, that is correct. Youth, so, I am unable to change because I myself keep repeatedly making the decision not to change. I don't have enough courage to choose a new lifestyle. In other words, I do not have enough courage to be happy, and that's why I'm unhappy. Have I got anything wrong? Philosopher, no, you haven't. Youth, okay, in that case, my question is, what are the real measures I should take? What do I need to do to change my life? You haven't explained all that yet. Philosopher, you are right. What you should do now is make a decision to stop your current lifestyle. For instance, earlier you said, if only I could be someone like Y, I'd be happy. As long as you live that way, in the realm of the possibility of if only such and such were the case, you will never be able to change. Because saying if only I could be like Y is an excuse to yourself for not changing. Youth, an excuse not to change? Philosopher, yes. I have a young friend who dreams of becoming a novelist, but who never seems to be able to complete his work. According to him, his job keeps him too busy, and he can never find enough time to write novels, and that's why he can't complete work and enter it for writing awards. But is that the real reason? No. It's actually that he wants to leave the possibility of I can do it if I try open, by not committing to anything. He doesn't want to expose his work to criticism, and he certainly doesn't want to face the reality that he might produce an inferior piece of writing and face rejection. He wants to live inside that realm of possibilities, where he can say that he could do it if he only had the time, or that he could write if he just had the proper environment, and that he really does have the talent for it. In another five or ten years, he will probably start using other excuses like I'm not young anymore, or I've got a family to think about now. Youth, I can relate all too well to how he must feel. Philosopher, he should just enter his writing for an award, and if he gets rejected, so be it. If he did, he might grow, or discover that he should pursue something different. Either way, he would be able to move on. That is what changing your current lifestyle is about. He won't get anywhere by not submitting anything. Youth, but maybe his dreams will be shattered. Philosopher, well, I wonder. Having simple tasks, things that should be done, while continually coming up with various reasons why one can't do them sounds like a hard way to live, doesn't it? So, in the case of my friend who dreams of becoming a novelist, it is clearly the I, or the self, that is making life complicated and too difficult to live happily. Youth, but. That's harsh. Your philosophy is too tough. Philosopher, indeed, it is strong medicine. Youth, strong medicine. Yes, I agree. Philosopher, but if you change your lifestyle, the way of giving meaning to the world and yourself, then, both your way of interacting with the world and your behavior will have to change as well. Do not forget this point, one will have to change. You, just as you are, have to choose your lifestyle. It might seem hard, but it is really quite simple. Youth, according to you, there's no such thing as trauma, and environment doesn't matter either. It's all just baggage, and my unhappiness is my own fault, right? I'm starting to feel I'm being criticized for everything I've ever been and done. Philosopher, no, you are not being criticized. Rather, as Adler's teleology tells us, no matter what has occurred in your life up to this point, it should have no bearing at all on how you live from now on. That you, living in the here and now, are the one who determines your own life. Youth, my life is determined at this exact point? 
Philosopher, yes, because the past does not exist. Youth, all right. Well, I don't agree with your theories 100%. There are many points I'm not convinced about and that I would argue against. At the same time, your theories are worth further consideration and I'm definitely interested in learning more about Adlerian psychology. I think I've had enough for tonight, but I hope you won't mind if I come again next week. If I don't take a break, I think my head might burst. Philosopher, I'm sure you need some time on your own to think things over. I am always here, so you can visit whenever you like. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Let's talk again. Youth, great. One last thing, if I may. Our discussion today was long and got pretty intense, and I guess I spoke rather rudely. For that, I would like to apologize. Philosopher, don't worry about it. You should read Plato's dialogues. The conduct and language of the disciples of Socrates are surprisingly loose. That's the way a dialogue is supposed to be, 